One of the most controversial video series of devotionals that I've ever recorded or that ever brought to mind when I was publishing also booklets that went along with what Jesus said. Because, you see, people like to adapt what Jesus said. They like to take what he said by his own words and his own admission and change them into something that fits their own religion or their own perspective. For instance, some of the other religions will call Jesus a prophet, but they won't take what Jesus said about himself and say, well, Jesus said. Or a lot of times we'll take the Bible says or the scriptures say, but what did Jesus say? And you see, that's what's made this series so controversial because we're looking directly, specifically, and intensely at what Jesus said. Because Jesus said what he meant and meant what he said. It's not just about the Bible saying what it means because there are instances in there where it records about people killing each other and doing all kinds of things. And those are records. Those are contained for our instruction. But when there's a direct quote, when Jesus himself says, do these things as he does on the Sermon on the Mount, then we have to take a very realistic approach to what we're reading, what we're hearing, and what we're seeing. Because if we don't do those things, Jesus warned us also. So he didn't give this ability to pick and choose what we want to hear or what we want to do. He's flat out said, this is what I am saying to you. And he makes a blunt. Then, at the end of when he's done speaking, he says, this is what happens if you do what I said. This is what happens if you don't do what I said. And we've looked at it every time that we've listed these videos. We've said, what did Jesus say? What did he mean? Was he specific? Was he real? Was he philosophical? Was he generalizing? Or was he very specifically telling you today, do this or don't do it, but this is what I say to you. And we know that Jesus exercised authority and the people were amazed at that because they found in Jesus someone they could say, he's telling us to do, I can point to him. This is what Jesus said for me to do. And so they followed him because he was one who said, I say unto you. Before the scribes and the Pharisees would quote some general idea, kind of like how politics can say things about politics and then they can just make it all the people and we this and we that, instead of me and you and Jesus and what we do. Because that's what the Sermon on the Mount is all about. There is no corporate responsibility of the church doing. It's what you will do. Because Jesus says in the end of it, he doesn't say, what does the church do in building a house? He doesn't say anything else. He says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, not a wise church, a wise person. It's individual, it's specific, it's located, it's directive, and its objectivity is to bring you into a right relationship with God himself, because it's Jesus said. And so when we look at it, it's been amazing to find out that we might not know what he said. We thought we did, until we looked specifically, line by line, precept upon precept, asking the questions of what did Jesus say. And so now in verse 18, as we've been looking, you can read it all in context if you want to and say, okay, now I'm going to read it in context and it's going to give me a different meaning. Try it. Not this time. I'm sorry. When you read it in context, you're going to find that the context fits the specifics and the specifics fit the context. Context. There is specificity in its lineage. It is line upon line, not just building upon itself, but also being very specific, very real, and very personal, which is why we're taking it line by line. You can read the context and find whether or not it fits. The Holy Spirit can make it real to you. But the bottom line is we know what Jesus said. You have no doubt about what he means. He's very clear. So now, as we read last week was, Let your light so shine before men, see your good works. We've read all about the Beatitudes and how he blessed the people. We've read that you're salt of the earth. We serve as your light of the world. We've read all those things already. But now he's getting very, very specific. He says to the people that are there at the time, not just the disciples, but the people that are listening, don't think that I've come to destroy the law of the prophets. And we looked at how he fulfills the law and the prophets. Now he's going to get even more real so you don't misunderstand and he says in verse 18 verily verily means truthfully means factually means i'm getting specific 
This is what I mean. It means all of that. A veracity is the verification of the stated purpose and design. That's what veracity is. Take verily in the old English and you come up with veracity or veridicus. And so let's get to the reality of him saying it with just the simple English. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whoa! Whoa! First of all, what's a jot and tittle? That's pretty good. It's a dot and a comma. Tittle, technically. It's all little consonants and things that were written in Hebrew. So, if you don't understand that, call it a dot. Call it a period. Call it crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Call it being very acutely aware that if you left something out, it would not be complete. So nothing is left out. That's what Jesus is saying, what a jot and a tittle is. And in all of what he is specifically saying to make it real to you, he's saying, guess what? I'm not coming to destroy the law. I'm not coming to set it aside. And I'm not coming to make it anything more than worse than what you think it is. Because this law that God gave did not change. This law that you agreed to be children of this covenant did not change. It still applies. And now I am going to make it apply to all who follow me. It is no longer a law unto the children of Israel. It is no longer the law of Moses for Moses communicating it to the children that had come out of Egypt who had been so wrapped up in the Egyptian culture that they no longer were a people unto themselves or unto God, but that they had to make a decision whether or not they wanted to follow the ways that they had been raised up in after living in Egypt for 400 years or whether they wanted to be a people of God, with God, and that God would be their people and they would be his possession forever. And so they are because they made that covenant and that agreement though they failed miserably at times, he is still the God of the children of Israel. And everyone that is of the tribes of Jacob, the children of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Israel, are blessed by God, chosen by God, and forever will be the children of God. But now we have a choice for ourselves to make, that we likewise, having been under the mountain, we've come up to the mountain on the Sermon on the Mount, and we have to find that, guess what? The law, the law is applicable to us. But the point being is that since the law is not going away by what Jesus did, even in his death and resurrection, the ordinances of the law, in other words, the requirements of what the law was going to cause in you, were going to be nailed to the cross. But we don't even know that yet. Let's just deal with what Jesus said. He said the law is not going away till heaven and earth pass. Wait a minute. I know all about grace. I know all about the law. I thought grace took the place of law. No. The law will always be here till heaven and earth pass. Think about it. Recognize it. What did Jesus say? Your reality of what you may have conflict with can be solved in some other time and place. But you have to understand what your foundation is. You have to understand what is fact. Then read the rest so you can figure out where you made a mess or where you don't understand quite how it fits. Because, see, what people do is that they take the law in religion and then they say, well, we'll take the first part, like love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. Then we'll say that the rest are qualifiers. Then we'll take the other part about love your neighbor as yourself and the rest are qualifiers. Okay, can I read you something about the qualifier? Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. None of it's passing away, none of it's a qualifier, none of it is being exaggerated, none of it is specific unto one people or another. It is specific unto the law of God that Jesus said will not pass away till heaven and earth pass away. That means it is to all people at all times in every situation. So how can you, how can you deal with the law? And that's the problem. As you see, the law is in effect always, but what takes you outside of the law is if you are dead to your own flesh and you have been crucified with Christ, but you still live. So you see, the law applies to your physical body, to your physical actions, to the things that you're doing. So the law is still in effect. Don't get this mistaken. I'm not saying to be a legalist. 
No, grace abounds, and grace much more abounds, even so, because there is law. There is what is called instruction. There is reality of God saying that the world was placed in this order, mine. And Jesus is going to make that very specifically clear and make it more so aware of the perfection that God requires of us. How to achieve that perfection, we learn later. But what he is saying specifically now is that the law does not go away. The law is not made up. The law is not specific to one people or another. The law is in effect till heaven and earth pass away. You need to know what the law is. Is it only the Ten Commandments? Is it 613 mitzvot? Is it the religious law that Christians have? Is it the moral law that we say is in our heart? Is it our conscience law? Is it societal law? What is the law that Jesus says will not pass away? Not one part of it, not one inkling of it, not one iota of it, till all be fulfilled. The reason why he says all be fulfilled, because there's something about the law that is going to make you realize that it's there for a reason to unveil something that has to be fulfilled in it. And what we find that is fulfilled in it is God's mercy, God's forgiveness, God's grace, God's kindness, because if there isn't law to condemn us, if there isn't law to convict us, then there is no grace, there is no mercy, and there is no justification, no reconciliation, no redemption, and no atonement, because the law has to make it a mandatory requirement for us to do. So it will be in effect always, so that justification, atonement, reconciliation, all these wonderful words that we say that Jesus did apply to us. For without the law, there is no need of them. But because the law exists, then all has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's what Jesus is saying. That's what Jesus said. That's why we have to know what the law is. We have to be aware of it. We have to see it. We do have to do it in a way that God says is the way to fulfill it. Not your way, not my way, not the religious way, not the Judaic way, not the Mosaic way, not the Orthodox way, not the Reform way, not the Christianity way, not the fundamentalist Christian way, not the Protestant way, but God's way, according to what Jesus said. And what Jesus said to do is what we must if we are to follow him. So what did Jesus tell you to do? What is Jesus telling you to do? What have you done with what Jesus said? Because I'll tell you today, right now, you have heard what Jesus said. It's not going away. It will stand in heaven, and you will stand either condemned by it or confirmed by it. So what will you do with what Jesus said? And Jesus said, For verily, I say unto you, I, the Son of God, the Son of Man, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Jesus said, till all be fulfilled, the law is in effect. The law does not pass away. The law will convict. And the law will guide and the God law will instruct. What did Jesus say is what we must do.